So this is the game Normandy 44 by Mark Simontich. I've done a quick little overlook of the game before, but now I'm going to go a little more in depth about this game. I've got it set up here in my, uh, in my classroom uh, in the corner, you can see here. But I've got this uh, set up. I've been playing. I've played it with a few high school students. And uh, I'm working my way through the game again. This will be the third time through, and I'm just playing solitaire this time. But I've got it all set up. Just finished the first turn. Um, you can see here where the British have landed. Then there's Omaha, Utah Beach. You can see the paratroopers um, surrounded here. And um, just kind of an overlook of the board here. Got some of the charts over here for the um, reinforcements. I got the, comes with two different um, cheat sheets, double sided, so I put one of each side face up. It's, it's a paper map, but I've got it covered here with a piece of plexiglass, pretty standard for wargaming. Um, here's the rules from 2010, and then you can see here that I've done a complete printout on GMT's website and on Board Game Geek. You can get a copy of the living rules, and it's real convenient because the living rules have anything that's updated or changed in blue. As far as the map goes, there's really no uh, errata on the map per se. A few of the counters have a few little tiny mistakes on it. Um, let's see, I think there's one in here somewhere that had a wrong setup. If you look at the, if you look at a counter, you can see in the top right corner they have the setup area. I think one of the counters had the wrong setup area on it. It was really little errata. And on the website you'll also see I have in here the question and answers. So there's only a really small amount of errata. Um, setup hexes and a couple different tanks. Like here's some setup that has got the wrong historical unit on it. And then they've even got a on Board Game Geek, you can get a copy of the a printout, a color printout, or a, a file, so you can print out the, the mistakes on the counters. And a, few, a couple of these are optional if you want to. Or you can just, what I do is I just put a little asterisk right on the counter so I'll know something's wrong and then I can look it up. All right, so what we have here is a one map Normandy um, game that is going to pit the Germans against the Americans and British, or the Allies, where it is hexagonal based, so the big comparison that everyone talks about is Breakout Normandy versus this, where I feel like I own them both and I like them both. Breakout Normandy has more of the logistics feel to it. You're really kind of controlling logistics. And this is, a, I guess, uh, there's lots of exceptions and stuff, but for the most part, it's it's just a fun little game that um, it's more focuses on the tactical stuff, like uh, in, um, fighting it out and things. There's more... There's more um, CRTs. There's more modifiers and things when you fight uh, tactically. Um, so let me just go through how this is going to work. The there's going to be an invasion turn where you just it's a, a sequence of events. You know that you put the paratroopers down. Then there's going to be a scatter die right a scatter right here that's going to happen to them. Um, and then whatever is going to happen is going to happen. Now the paratroopers, like most units, you have your you have your full size. You flip them over. The stripe on the back represents that they've been hurt, and then a unique part of this game is they have these cadres, which are over here on these replacement maps, and so like these are a three-step unit. So first step, second step, and they put the cadre out, and then if the cadre is eliminated, that unit is just destroyed. So up here I got some destroyed. Some of the units, like um, these little Wehrmacht units, are just a one-step unit. Oh, here's one of my errata units. You can see on there where I just used a pen to write the new thing on there. I know that's horrible. All my counters are clipped, by the way, because that's how I do things. So, uh, you'll see, so that's a three-step unit. Um, that's kind of neat. And you can spend your reinforcement points over here on this chart, which you track both players with, to rebuild these units. Or, in the case of the, the Brits and the Americans, they bring units in from Britain. This is the Britain card. So all these these units here are in Britain waiting to come over. The German reinforcements are a planned sequence. They come in uh, based on the date. So the, after we're at the invasion phase, it's just going to go into a basic step-by-step. -step. You can see here on, this, on the Board Game Geek, I got a nice sequence of play that I printed out and just goes through step-by-step. -step. Uh, I recommend this, especially when you're learning the game. So you have the initial phase, both players are going to do things, and the German player is going to take his turn, replacements, movement, combat, Reserves, which is like breakthrough movement from other games, kind of. Recovery, then supply. 
then the allied player does the same, then both players do the end of the phase, which you check some stuff, and then you advance the game turn. Um, some neat aspects of the game that aren't necessarily unique, though, you've got your, you got your naval out here that you can use to, as a modifier. You can flip over naval to, to support your attacks or to help you do a determined defense, which is a neat aspect of this game, and I'll explain that. Then you have your air power, which is basically the same thing. Now, a determined uh, defense. You have your CRT, so you're fighting out, and it's odds, just like most of your war games. And some of the def defender has many options in this game, and what he can do is, even if he loses the battle, he can decide if he wants to try a determined defense. But that is like a, uh, a last-ditch maneuver to hold ground. There's modifiers that you can bring into play to see if he's success successful or not. And if he wins the determined defense, he doesn't have to retreat. He can negate the retreat. And depending on if you're in a strong point or in a, uh, the clear or a flooded territory, there's all these modifiers that come into play. So that's why I said there's lots of exceptions and little modifiers you got to keep track of. But that will determine uh, what happens. And if you, even if you lose the determined defense, you can go down to a desperation turn, like where if, if you guys are going to die if they retreat, then there's even some rules that you can use to try to, uh, one last attempt not to die. Um, whereas other games just automatically die when you retreat. So there's a way around that. you got your terrain effects chart, which they have these defensive combat bonuses. So the way that works is when you compute your odds, uh, attacker versus defender, the attacker gets, um, he goes by his division integrity or his, his battle group. And you take and you add up all the points, his attack factors, plus maybe an attached unit, Anything that's not part of that group that's still attacking in that same combat can add half their firepower. And then you add some modifier, or not modifiers yet, so you get a number. And then for the defender, you take his defense, and then you look at the terrain chart and have these defensive combat bonuses, and you add that bonus to the defense power, and then you're going to get a ratio. You break the ratio down to its lowest common numbers, and you can get 2 to 1, 3 to 1, 4 to 1, however. And then after you do that, you're going to look at your, your CRT modifiers, and these are going to be column shifts. So for example, Troop, call, troop quality shift. The counters on them are going to have a little troop quality, a little plus one there for these uh, German paratroopers. So if you're attacking and you have a better overall troop quality than the defender, um, like if, you're one of your, if your units have a higher troop quality, then you're going to get a column shift. So two to one will go to three to one, or three to one to four to one. And uh, there's one for armor, there's one for tiger tanks. Or so The Germans have a few uh, tiger tanks out here which can cause a column shift. Maybe just the psychological aspect of those. Then there's air support, you know, for the allies, naval support, um, strategic move. If your defender was strategic moving across the map, he's not prepared to fight, so you're going to get a, a positive shift for the attacker on that one. Uh, artillery is pretty simple. Anything, your artillery are going to be your command units, uh, are going to have your artillery ability, and you don't flip them over to use them, you just have to use supply points, and you can, if you can trace it to the main German supply area, and if you have supply points available, you can spend supply points to use the artillery that's within five hexes of the combat. So you can shift the combat for artillery. And then there's defensive shifts such as crossing river, being on a hilltop. Um, if it's clear weather, the Americans are going to get a shift because of the, uh, uh, the air support that they have available. Um, and then you can have the attacking. Just, just it, it, All these tables are laid out pretty well, which I like. Um, so that's how the combat works. And then the retreat's going to have a priority of how you retreat, what happens if you retreat through Z Zox. This game has Zox, like most hex games, uh, zones of control. Um, they have Zoc, uh, Zoc bonds, so two, two friendly units on the map. Uh, they do a, a zone of control, but the, between the two, they make like a force field. You can't just run your unit through the middle of those units. All right? So like this, you couldn't go through there. Like this, you couldn't go through there. That's a pretty neat aspect. Um, and there's your basic NATO symbol units, then there's silhouetted units, like this anti-aircraft gun. And I'll zoom in and show you some of those in a minute. That all come into play. So for the most part, it's not a very complicated game, but there's lots of exceptions. And so I suggest printing out um, these little cheat sheets like this one I got over here. Uh, take your time and go through it. There's the, in the back of the rule book, In the back of the rule book, you're going to have a nice color, uh, full initial player turn uh, example of play. It goes through the invasion phase with pictures and examples and things, which is really cool. I went through that a few times. The designer notes in the back are pretty interesting. But I like uh, Mr. Simonditch's uh, designs, and this is definitely one that I like. 
this one will see some table time, especially uh, now that I'm teaching high school again. So I've got a whole group of boys that I want to play games with so I can pick and choose. And Normandy is something that uh, even high school boys, uh, or girls I guess, but high school kids would recognize. Um, whereas something in the eastern front might be harder. So this one would probably see a lot more play time. Um, solitaire value, I think I was playing this one solitaire and I'm having no problems playing solitaire. You just have to make, there's even some rules included uh, to help out if you want to play solitaire. So I think it's got a high solitaire value. Um, you just have to be able to switch your mindset when you're the German and when you're the, uh, the allied player to, you know, try to forget what your plans were. And it's, it's the same, same challenge you always have when you play solitaire game. But this one is pretty easy for that. So I think the best way to explain uh, some of this game is just to show you an example of a combat. So here we have the evil Germans attacking the glorious 101st Airborne. Yes, I was in 101st. So you can see what I'll do is help you figure out this here. So we have uh, our lead units. Are, you pick a, a, a group, okay? And we're going to go with this German unit here, these, the 91st Division here. So you take their, they get full strength because they're all part of the same unit. So you have 2, 4, and 4 is 8. And then you can attach one silhouetted unit, this tank unit be silhouetted. So we had, we had 8, 9, 10. And then you have this Ost unit here, which is not part of the unit. It's still part of it, so it can attack at half of that power. So he'd be a 1. So we have 11 total firepower. 11. Then you take the Defender. And the Defender, oh, so 11 total firepower. The Defender is a 4. So it's 11 versus 4. So that's 2 to 1 on our charts here. All right, we have two to one odds, so we'd roll a die. But before we do that, we're going to look at our, our shifts. Actually, I'm, I let me back that up. We see that the uh, the terrain uh, comes into play. He's in the bocage. All right, so we look at our bocage over here. We have bocage. Ooh, four defensive uh, uh, DCBs right there. So combat bonuses. So instead of being a four, he's now an eight. Okay, so he's at 8. So we had 11 to 8. So it's now, instead of being 2 to 1, it's just 1 to 1. So we have a 1 to 1 combat. Now we want to go to our, our shifts. Okay, so we go through our little CRTs over here. So the first one, troop quality shift. This is for the attacker and defender. So on our troop quality, we can see indeed the uh, 101st is a plus 1, whereas the highest of the Germans is not even on there. So they're all zeros or a minus two for the Ost. So we're going to get a troop quality shift in favor of the Americans. So now instead of being one to one, it's one to two. Now armor shift. Since the Germans have armor and the Americans do not, they're going to get the armor shift. And this was that little symbol there. The middle is the armor power. In case the American force had armor, then you'd go with the highest armor power. And so since the Germans have an armor shift, it's going to go back, instead of being 1 to 2, it's going to go back to 1 to 1. No Tiger tanks are involved. Then we look at air support for the attacker. Nope, the Germans have no air support. They have no naval, no defender this. Now, artillery. All right, let's see if we can get an artillery shift involved. Well, the artillery, which just magically appeared down here, is within 5 axes, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we can use the artillery as long as we have uh, the supply points to do it, and so I will use his, this uh, Cherbourg Fortress supply, pump it down one, and that'll give me another shift. So now instead of being one to one, we're going to go up to two to one. And then we have um, shifts for the defender, or they've crossed and across a river, flooded hex, no, hilltop, no, and have, uh, have for attacking units, well not a part of the main attack force, we already have that one unit. No, not the Sherberg perimeter, out of supply, nope, no reinforcements. The reinforcements are half power in our first turn. So we ended up being two to one. All right, so we roll our die and we get a five. So we look at the five on two to one and we have a defender retreats. So defender must either retreat or conduct a determined defense. That's what I was talking about earlier. The attacker may advance after combat if the defender retreats. And there's a whole bunch of odds, but we can do this one, it's fine. So the American Airborne here, they, have, uh, they want to see if they want to do a retreat or not. So they could just retreat. And retreat, you always retreat two hexes, unless it says retreat four. So he has to retreat two hexes. And if you retreat through his zone of control, you've got to take a hit and everything else, just like typical war games. But he wants to try, let's say he wants to try a determined, uh, determined defense. So we look at the de determined defense table. So first we see what is he in? Is he in flooded or clear, clear terrain? No. Is he in other? Yes. He's in the bocage. He's not improved. That would be like the, uh, that would be like these guys here. He's not inside of an uh, improved position. So he doesn't get that. He's not in a strong point or a city, so he can't use that. So he's going to use this column here. Well, he's going to roll a die, and if he rolls a five, these black dots, he 
it doesn't have to retreat. But if he rolled the minus one, um, it would mean that the defender would lose a step. All right, so he'd lose a step, but he gets to stay. If he rolled a six, they would need an exchange. They would have to each uh, lose one step in any attacking unit. Defender gets to pick who, too. That's the neat thing. So I could take your best unit and make it flip, make it lose a step. So the exchange. All right, so he would get to stay. And then you have all, which is uh, any one attacking unit, attacker's choice, and not necessarily for the main attacking force takes, so the attacker would lose a step. Now, that's what you do, but there's there's modifiers. So you get to take in the lead unit's troop quality, so plus or minus, and then defensive support. And the defensive supports are such things as the um, battleship or the um, air support, things like that. You can There's a whole list of things that you can do to try to help you out your defense. So let's say he does that, and he rolls a 5. So he rolls a 5 on determined defense. He does indeed pass. It's a minus 1, so he gets to hold position but he flips, and that might stymie, stymie the whole German attack. So there you go. That's how the uh, combat works. It's fairly straightforward once you get the exceptions down. All right, so there's Normandy 44. Um, GMT made this in 2010, I believe, but it's on the P500 now, so you can reorder a copy for fairly cheap, I think under $40, but don't hold me to that. So you can get a copy for fairly cheap. Um, beautiful components, not much to rata. Uh, the new version, the reprint, will probably have the living rules, will have the updated rules, so the mistakes that were in the rules will be fixed. and Or you can just print out the living rules like I did. Um, it's a beautiful niche because it just it's a one-map game. It's a small game. You can set up on a small table like this and play and enjoy yourself. So if you like uh, Normandy, you'll like this game added to your collection. All right, thanks.